Hi there, my name is Debbie Hanula, and I'm currently the Associate Chair in the Department of Psychology. This means that I'm responsible for the undergraduate program in psychology and a great person to get in touch with if you have questions about the major, the minor, or anything else that's related to your degree. If I don't have an answer to your question, I'll find someone who does. My contact information is shown here, and generally the best way to get in touch with me is by email. So please do feel free to write me if you have a question. This brief video is meant to provide you with a basic introduction to some of the highlights of our program and the psychology degree more generally, and I hope that you find it useful. So let's start from the top and assume that you'd like to declare the major or minor but haven't gotten to it yet. If this applies to you, it's no problem. We've got a website for that and the process can be completed entirely online. If you navigate to our site and click on the undergraduate menu, you'll see an option to declare the major or the minor. To declare the major, you must have completed Psych 101 and at least 15 university credits. Provided that you meet these basic requirements, you should read the psychology major handbook and take the corresponding online quiz. Links to both of these items can be found on this website. The online quiz is really a very simple assessment meant to make sure that you're aware of some key components of the psychology major. After you've completed the quiz, then you'll choose a faculty member in our department to serve as your major advisor, and you'll complete the online declaration of major form. It's important to note that if you complete the declaration of major form, but have not yet submitted the quiz, your major cannot be processed and pause will not be updated you must complete both parts of the declaration of major process. Step one is to read the handbook and take the online quiz. Step two is to choose an advisor and submit the declaration of major form for the change to take effect. For those of you who are interested in the minor, the process is very similar. Provided that you've completed Psych 101 and at least 45 university credits, you can declare the minor by choosing a faculty member to serve as your advisor and filling out the online declaration of minor form. Then you're all set. The changes should appear in pause within the next few business days. Something to consider if you're planning to major in psychology is whether you'd prefer to complete the Bachelor of Science degree or the Bachelor of Arts degree. Both degree options are available to psychology majors and the choice is yours to make. When students who are wrestling with this choice come to me for advice, I ask them what they're leaning towards doing in the future. In other words, what do you want to do after you graduate? If you're planning for a career in research or a career that has a math and science bent, then you probably want to opt for the BS. Whereas if you're anticipating a career as a counselor, a social worker, or something similar where you'll be interacting with lots of people, then the BA is probably the route to take. A question that you might have is whether there are differences in course requirements across degree types, and if so, what they are. In broad strokes, the primary difference between degrees is that more foreign language is required of students who earn the BA, whereas students who pursue the BS must complete 30 advanced credit hours in letters and science courses with the advanced natural science designation. Whether you choose the BS or the BA, you will need to complete 120 credit hours. 90 of these will be in the College of Letters and Science, and 36 of 90 must be advanced courses, which are classes at the 300 level or higher. If you'd like more specific information about the general Letters and Science degree requirements, check out the site that's referenced here. In addition, it's my strong recommendation that you meet regularly with your assigned Letters and Science advisor to confirm that you're making good progress and to plan for future semesters. As you're working to meet LNS degree requirements, it's also important to pay close attention to the requirements of the psychology major. So we'll go over those requirements briefly right now. Our flagship course, the one that you must complete before declaring the major is Psych 101. Next, you'll complete some required lower division coursework in psychology, including Psych 210, statistics, Psych 254, which is physiological psychology, and one more 200 level class of your choice. Another required course in the major is Psych 325, which is research methods. It's important to note that you must have a combined GPA of 2.62 or higher in intro psych and statistics in order to enroll in research methods, which rounds out the entry level coursework for the major. 
To make good progress in the major, you probably want to complete statistics by the end of your sophomore year so that you can enroll in research methods as a junior. Finally, you must complete five additional classes at the 300 level or higher. One or two of these must be from the set of advanced laboratory courses. Ultimately, to meet requirements of the major, you must complete 32 credits in psychology with a combined GPA of 2.0 or higher. Please note that if you're a transfer student, this GPA is calculated twice, once based on grades from all of your psychology classes, both the transfer credits and credits from UWM, and again based only on your psychology classes from UWM. A great way to keep track of your progress in the major or the minor is to use the checklist that we've designed with this purpose in mind. This is what the major checklist looks like, and you can use it to check off the requirements as you meet them. So for example, when you've completed Psych 101, check it off. When you've completed Psych 210, do the same. Make sure as you navigate the major that you're paying close attention to any listed prerequisites. Prerequisites ensure that you've learned the fundamental concepts that are important in the class you'd like to take. If you're completing the BS, then you'll want to look for classes with an NS designation, as these are courses in the psychology major that meet the advanced natural science requirement for your degree. Finally, schedule meetings with your chosen faculty advisor at the beginning of the academic year or as needed. Your faculty advisor in psychology can help you navigate this checklist and your coursework and provide advice about next steps, whether that means graduate school or career options. Something else that you might consider is whether it might be to your advantage to pick up a minor or a certificate as an undergraduate at UWM. UWM has nearly 150 different options for you to consider. Are you thinking about a career in law? Then perhaps a minor in criminal justice makes sense. Would you like to be a counselor? Then something like school counseling or mastery of a foreign language like Spanish might be to your advantage. Interested in a career in the tech industry? If so, computer skills are paramount. In fact, computer skills are increasingly important whatever you do, which means that a minor in computer science, digital arts, or something similar may be useful. The best advice I can offer is that you take a look at the options and choose something that interests you and that will round out the skill set that you'll need given your objectives for the future. If you do choose to pursue a minor, I would also recommend that you speak with your LNS advisor about whether and how this will affect your time to degree completion. Make sure that you're equipped with the necessary information so that you can make informed decisions about how best to proceed. Some opportunities that set UWM apart and that students may choose to take advantage of involve stepping outside of the traditional classroom setting. If you're looking for something more than just the standard classroom experience, then you might consider completing a field placement, which is our version of the internship. Field placements are a great way to get some real world experience with a community organization or nonprofit that has a mission consistent with your career preferences. You can complete a field placement as early as your freshman year, and if you find after completing the placement that the work really didn't match your expectations, then you can re-enroll and try something else. Freshmen and sophomores who complete the field placement enroll in Psych 292, juniors in 692, and seniors in 697. To enroll in a field placement, you must identify a placement site. To get started, we have suggestions listed on our website, and I send out messages to students when I hear about relevant opportunities. In the end, you want to identify a placement site that matches your interests, which is why we leave that part up to you. Next, you'll identify a faculty member in psychology willing to serve as your field placement advisor and ask them whether your intended field placement site is acceptable. If you're given permission to proceed, then you can register for credit with that faculty member. Over the course of the semester, you will spend at least 135 hours working at the placement site and complete some required paperwork together with your placement site supervisor. Your faculty advisor may also have some additional work for you to do. For instance, students who complete the field placement with me submit twice monthly activities reports and write a brief term paper related to their experiences at the placement site. 
Before you get started, you should check with the faculty member you'd like to work with about their expectations. The field placement is your opportunity to get some hands-on experience and test the waters. Students who take advantage of the field placement generally have positive and eye-opening experiences. In short, it's an opportunity to try it before you buy it. In addition, it's a great opportunity to network and make contacts in your chosen profession. These folks are best equipped to provide guidance about the skill set required in a particular field and whether or what kind of additional education might be required to get there. For additional information about the field placement, please check out our undergraduate program handbook or our website. Another opportunity that some students, especially those who are interested in graduate school or a career in research, choose to pursue is to join a research lab. In addition to teaching, many faculty in our department run scientific research labs. If you're interested in research, the first thing to do is to check out the faculty profiles on our website. Many of our faculty maintain websites that focus on ongoing projects that are being conducted in their labs, and these sites are a great way to learn about the kind of work that's being conducted and whether the lab mission aligns with your interests. It's critical, if you're interested in getting research experience, that you do your homework and determine what most interests you. Once you've found something that fits the bill, reach out to the faculty member who runs the lab and ask whether they're looking for volunteers to help with their research activities. Note that some people may have specific instructions about how to inquire about these positions on their websites. If so, make sure to follow those instructions. If you do write a faculty member about their lab, make the message brief, but be sure to clearly articulate why their lab in particular is of interest to you. Undergraduate research assistants work on a voluntary basis, can earn credit, or may be paid for their service. One funding mechanism available to students is the Support for Undergraduate Research Fellowship, also known as the SURF Award. This may be an option for you and would be something to discuss with the faculty member whose lab you're working in. You should know that research experience is an absolute must if you're considering a research-based graduate program. So get out there, check out the work that's being done in the department, and see whether something is a good fit. Something to consider well in advance of graduation is what you'd like to do next. It's possible that a graduate degree will be required for the kind of work that you'd like to do. If this applies to you, it's important to determine how best to prepare so that you're setting yourself up for success in what can be a very competitive admissions process. First, you'll need to determine what sort of graduate program you're interested in. Some programs end with a master's degree and professional certification. Examples include the Master's in Counseling Psychology and the Master's in Social Work, though there are others as well. Typically, these are two-year programs that combine some sort of specialized coursework with internships and experience out in the field and culminate in a certification test. If you're interested in becoming a clinical psychologist, then you'll be applying to a PsyD or a PhD program in clinical psychology. These are longer programs. On average, you're looking at about a six-year time commitment. In the broadest terms, the difference between the PsyD and the PhD is that the PhD programs involve significant scientific research along with the required clinical training. Together with your research mentor, you will design and conduct experiments that culminate in a PhD thesis defense. Those interested in psychiatry attend medical school. In each case, you can work in a clinical setting or in a variety of other positions, and as a psychiatrist, you can prescribe medications. There are a number of other research-based PhD programs in psychology as well. For instance, my PhD is in cognitive neuroscience. Friends of mine have degrees in industrial organizational psychology, cognitive psychology, perception and human performance, quantitative psychology, and a number of other domains. My recommendation, if you're considering graduate school, is that you start by checking out the admissions requirements. The web is a fantastic resource for this kind of information, but your chosen psychology faculty advisor can also point you in the right direction and provide advice. For some programs, it'll be important that you have some relevant clinical experience working with mental health professionals. The field placement is a great way to get this kind of experience, as is volunteering or working for a local organization or nonprofit with a mission focused on mental health. 
For other programs, as I've said, research experience and a solid skill set that will permit you to hit the ground running is really paramount. Typically, application materials for graduate school will include the application form, your CV, which is also known as your resume, your transcript, GRE scores, a personal statement, and three letters of recommendation. It's generally assumed if you're applying to graduate school that you have excellent grades. In addition, many programs uh, still require GRE scores. The GRE is a standardized test, much like the ACT or the SAT that you took for undergraduate admission. It's true that some programs no longer include the GRE as a requirement, so you'll want to check the requirements for the programs that you plan to apply for carefully to see whether this is something that you need to include. The personal statement is where you explain why you've applied to a particular program, what you're hoping to achieve, and the skill set or experience that you bring to the table. A well-crafted, clearly written personal statement is incredibly important and is one of the things I look most closely at during admission season. You'll also need three letters of recommendation from faculty or professionals in the field who know you well and can speak about your strengths as an applicant. I can tell you from experience that it's very difficult to write a compelling letter for a student that I've not met personally and had some interaction with. The strongest letters will come from a research mentor or an instructor that you've had some interaction with outside of the classroom. This may have been in office hours or other settings like your field placement advisor. Uh, the person who's serving as your field placement advisor will have had more opportunity for one-on-one -on -one interaction with you. Ideally, this person will be able to speak in some detail about the quality of your writing and other work, your performance in the classroom or the lab, and your interpersonal skills. You should approach potential letter writers at least one month in advance of the earliest application deadline, ask whether they're willing to write a letter, provide them with a list of schools and deadlines, and offer to share materials that you've prepared, including your personal statement and your CV, which may help them prepare a letter. As I've already said, in many cases, a strong record of research experience is required for graduate school. This is especially important if you plan to apply to PhD programs. In some cases, you may be asked to describe relevant clinical experience that you've had. I've seen this requirement, for example, in applications for admission to master's programs in counseling psychology. It's important to start investigating graduate programs early so that you're well prepared when the time comes along to apply. This means looking into graduate schools well before your senior year so that you can make sure that you're an ideal applicant. This is because admission can be incredibly competitive. For example, we had 238 applicants for the PhD program in clinical psychology last year. 13 offers were made and seven students joined our program this fall. If graduate school is not for you, then you might have questions about potential career paths with a degree in psychology. Psychology is a broad field of study and our program is tailored so that you will have developed a number of skills that employers find valuable by the time you graduate, including critical thinking, basic computational literacy, and knowledge in the domain of human behavior. If you'd like to land a job straight away after graduating with a degree in psychology, then my best advice is that you take advantage of web-based job searching platforms right now. Technology these days makes it quite easy to see what kinds of jobs are available to individuals with a bachelor's degree in psychology. When I'm speaking with students who have asked about career paths, I'll typically check out web searching platforms like Indeed or a local site called Jobs That Help. Jobs That Help advertises positions in the nonprofit sector. A simple Google search can also pay dividends. Most recently, when I ran one of these searches, I saw a job posting with a local branch of the FBI. They were looking for applicants with a bachelor's degree in psychology. Exploring these job posts is a great way to get a sense of the skill set that is in demand in your chosen profession. You can then tailor your educational experience to make sure that you have that skill set when you graduate. As I'd suggested earlier, this might involve picking up a minor. If you're thinking of a career straight out of college, then you should seriously consider the field placement and give things a test run. When you do, if you find that you like what you're doing, ask people about their path. How did they land the job that they're in? 
They've gotten there, they've arrived, and in my experience, most people are happy to talk about their experiences and provide eager young students with advice about their careers. Finally, be sure to take advantage of campus resources like the Career Planning and Resource Center. If you're unsure about what to do or how to get started, they can help. They can give you career advice, help you prepare a resume, and provide information about Handshake, which is a search platform for jobs, internships, and upcoming events available to UWM students. You pay for these services in your fees, so you might as well take advantage of them. So I hope that you found some of the information I've presented useful. I thought I'd just round out this talk with a few tips to help you along the way. So one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to make good progress in the major. To do this, you need to pay attention to prerequisites. If there's a course that you'd like to take in the future, make sure that you have the required coursework to enroll. In addition, if you find that your GPA is a bit below the 2.0 threshold required for graduation with a psychology degree, my advice is that you identify the classes you've performed most poorly in and repeat that class. Um, this will help to improve your GPA and permit you to make the required progress. It's important that you plan ahead. To do that successfully, you need to think about whether you're um, going to attend graduate school. So is your career path one that requires additional educational experience? You need to think about what kind of degree you'd like to get and how the application process works if you're, you're considering graduate school. What are your career goals? What kind of skill set is required or in demand? Check the job listings like I suggested. Might a minor help you get where you need to be? And then finally, ask for help. Your psychology advisor can provide great advice about the requirements of the major, the classes that you need to take, graduate school and careers in psychology. And your LNS advisor is an excellent resource for information about general education requirements. In addition, take advantage of resources that are available at UWM, like the Career Planning and Resource Center, if you have questions about where to head next. In the context of this talk, I've mentioned a number of different sites that you might visit to get information relevant to completing your degree in psychology. Another pro tip that I'd like to offer before I say goodbye is that you check out our website. You can do this by simply typing psychology UWM um, on Google. Once you've done that, you'll come to our Department of Psychology website. And if you scroll down to the bottom of this opening page, you'll find a set of quick links that include most of the sites that I've mentioned. So for example, you can easily get to the page where you declare the major or minor by using the quick links. In addition, you can find the undergraduate program handbook, our checklists, college requirements for the BS or the BA degree, information about field placements in psychology, undergraduate research opportunities, and access to the undergraduate scholarship portal. All of these links are the ones that I expect you'll use most often as a psychology major, and I hope that this feature of our website will be something that you find helpful. So with that, I'll go ahead and end this presentation, and thank you for your attention. I hope that you found the information that I presented informative. If you do have any questions about what I've said or about something that you've read in the handbook, then do feel free to get in touch with me. My email address is hanula, H-A-N-N-U-L-A, at uwm.edu, and I am happy to help. Thanks again.